So once again, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's session for the course Purposive Communication 1, entitled now Different Types of Text Reflecting Different Cultures. So we are already in our week eight of our lesson. So for this week, the lesson now will focus on the following. We have the definition of text, the definition of cultural text, sample text and their purposes, understanding different types of text. So let's go now to our very first topic, which is your definition of text. So by definition now, a text is not limited to something written down. A text can be a film, an artifact, or anything in a language and culture that conveys meaning. So in your definition, it says now that text is not limited to something that is written down. Uh, written down. So text can also go, uh, can also have different forms as long as it is used now to convey what we call meaning. So we should not limit ourselves that when we talk about text, it should only be in written. So what you are looking here right now is an example of text, but it is not limited to these kinds of examples. It can be in a form of a film. It can be in a form of an artifact. It can be now a reflection of someone's identity as long as it conveys now what we call meaning. So they say that text is the reflection of one's culture. Why? Because by definition now, let's go to your cultural text. By definition, it is now or these are now objects, actions, and behaviors that reveal cultural meaning. So as we've said a while ago, text is not purely written. It can make up any form. It can be in any form as long as it conveys meaning. And in terms of your cultural text, we have objects, actions, and behaviors. So when you go now to your house or when you observe your community, the food that you eat, the houses that you see, the clothing that you wear actually provides meaningful information about one's culture. When you go to other countries, you go to other places that is not the same of what culture you have in your area, you will notice now that there is a difference in terms of the food that they are, they are eating, the types of houses that they are living in, the structures or the contents of the house, and even the clothing. Okay, so those are examples of objects now that can be defined as your cultural text. How about when we talk about actions and behaviors? So when we talk about actions and behaviors, this pertains to your readable text. So when we talk about readable text, these are actually what we observe now or what we usually see when there are certain people gathering in specific cultures, like when you watch um, Korean movies you will see now that when they see someone or they meet now someone, they tend to bow down as a sign of respect for that another person or for that person. That is an, uh, that is an example of your actions and behaviors in your cultural text, okay? It also manifests now in the space or the place that they, are, uh, they live in. So when you, search now different countries or different places when you let check their places now or their spaces it is different from your type of place or type of space in your community because those kinds of places now or those spaces whatever you see there also now shows their culture we also have now your rituals your, the rules or the interactions that they do, those are examples of your readable text in your actions and behaviors. These are the things that reveals now their identities or their cultures or provide now 
um, explanations about their culture. So for us to show respect to other people now or to someone who is older than us, we sometimes say po and opo. Okay, when we're talking to, to an adult or to someone older than us, we use the term po and opo. Ate, kuya, those uh, uncles, aunties, those are the terms that we usually use. That shows now our cultural background. That in our culture, to show respect, this is what we do. So those are your cultural texts. So it's not mainly now written items, but it's also the things that surrounds the people, such as the objects, the actions, and behaviors. And it manifests now once we see it, once we uh, visualize now these things, or once we encounter or understand these things, it becomes your readable text. Okay, just simply looking at it, you are able to see now that this kind of gesture shows a sign of respect or these kinds of rules now or ritual shows these kinds of things. So that is your cultural text. Okay, next now. So text now happens or can come in different forms as what we've said a while ago. So it can also be in a different kind of writing. So writing now varies depending again to the situation, depending now on the environment we are in or depending now on the use of those texts. So to better understand this, we need to, or do, to better understand now the kind of text, we need now to understand why it was written, why these kinds of texts were written on the first place. So one good example we have here is an advert. So your advert or your advertisements. So advertisements can be in a form of written or we can also now see it in a form of your TV advertisements, radio advertisements. But adverts now are written or are used in order to influence someone to buy or to persuade now someone to buy certain products or to persuade someone to or to encourage someone to uh, join a specific group, to listen now to a specific song, that is your advert. So adverts are mainly focused now on persuasion. So when you see an advert for Christmas sale, so most of us were familiar with online buying. So we have Shopee, Lazada, Food Panda, so those kinds of things or those kinds of applications, uh, they provide what we call advert. What are the adverts now found on those kinds of things? We have, once you open now the app, you will see there 11-11 sale, 11-11 Christmas sale. So automatically, what will come to your mind when you see the word sale is the prices are lower, lower compared to the normal prices. Okay, so it will encourage you now once you see these things like when you want to buy a certain product and you saw that the price is lower compared to the original price, it might persuade you or encourage you to buy. So those are your adverts. Adverts now are persuasive types of text that encourages you now to buy something or to do something because of the advert. Another example we have is a user guide. Okay, a user guide is mainly found on or in tourism. Okay, so we usually see this in tourism, like when we visit now certain places or when we visit certain countries or certain areas in our community that we are not familiar with, they usually provide what we call your user guide. Okay, so a user guide is usually provides now instructions on how to how to make things how to cook things or how to go to specific places like when you're not familiar with the area and you want to go now visit a certain place it will provide you directions or instructions on how to go to those places those are what we call user guides okay user guides are mainly used to provide what we call instructions 
So instructions on how we cook things. So if you saw now a certain dish and you want to copy now that dish, you will be searching for the user guide on how to create that certain dish. Or if we want to uh, create now a box or we want to create drawers, we want to do it our own or do it yours. We want to do the do it yourself. Of course, you cannot do it without following any guide. Or when you are assembling, for example, your computer, you decided to build your own computer. So before you build your own computer, you follow what we call your user guide. So this user guide now focuses more on giving you instructions. So a user guide is a type of text, no, not a type of text, an example of text that gives you instructions, okay? Next, we have what we call your formal business letter. So another example of text is your formal business letter. So when do we usually use a formal business letter? Okay, we use it now to give information about something. So for example, your boss, or your superior now decided to provide information regarding uh, no classes to be done during these days. So those are informative letters. So it gives you now information about certain topics about or about certain something, certain something, certain topics or certain topics now wherein it uh, you use now a formal type of letter. So when we talk about formal business letter, if you remember last week's discussion, okay, if you've attended any virtual class uh, last week, we focus now on what we call your formal language register. So when we talk about formal language register, these are types of letters or writings that follows what we call structures and formats. Okay. So since it follows now certain structures and format, the content now of your letter usually is in a formal language. So announcements. This is to announce that we will not be having class on these days. That's another form of formal business letter. So it focuses now in giving information about certain topics. And last example of your text is your personal letter. A personal letter is a type of informal letter. So unlike your formal letter, wherein it follows now what we call your structure, your format, or it uses now what we call formal languages, personal letters doesn't uh, do those kinds of things. Rather, it is an example of what we call your free writing. So when we say free writing, you just simply write whatever information you want to convey to another person without worrying now, the, without worrying whether you're following the correct structure or the correct format. So it talks about emotions. It talks about the different things that you have done throughout that day. That's why one example here is describing a holiday vacation. So we write personal letters to those people who are very close to us or those people who are uh, parts, uh, part or members of our family or those people now who we consider them as uh, part uh, uh, as our closest friend or someone who's very intimate to us. Like, for example, if we have partners in life, those are examples now of uh, intimate relations, uh, relationships besides from your family members and closest friends, okay? So next, let's go now to the different types of texts. So as provided with the examples a while ago, we actually have specific terms that we use to, okay? to identify these types of text. And we have now four types, which are your persuasive, instructive, informative, and descriptive. So when we talk about persuasive text, what is now persuasive? So it is a type of text that really wants you to do something. 
So it's a persuasion now type of text wherein it will encourage you to do something. And the example that we provided a while ago is your advert. Okay, so it this is a type of text that has persuasion that will encourage you now to do certain things or to do now something um, about what is being uh, placed now in the text. So for example, here you have your Shopee. As I mentioned a while ago, we, they produce now what we call adverts like this one, 1111 Christmas sale. Since it's sale, the tendency is that we'll just, you know, we'll think that since the price is lower than before, we will be encouraged to buy, okay? Another example is here, the presidents now of different countries, if they provide now, for example, guidelines and they're persuading you to follow these guidelines. So since we are under now, but uh, we are now under a pandemic or we're having now this pandemic, usually our leaders now provides us with what we call guidelines. And these guidelines now, they persuade us now that we need to follow these guidelines so that to ensure to limit now the number of cases increasing. So that is an example of persuasive text. For example, they wrote there that you are not allowed to go to crowded places. You are not supposed, the other, per, they're going to persuade you to be vaccinated so that it uh, limits now the transmission of the virus or it limits now the effects of the virus in your body should you be able uh, should the virus now attack your body those are kinds of persuasive text okay so persuasive persuasive text might use the following repeated words like in your lazada or in your shopee 11 11 those are repeated words Okay, why do they use repeated words to emphasize now your advert or to em emphasize your persuasion? They use capital letters, they use bold letters, for example. So when they create announcements or guidelines, they capitalize now what needs to be done or they capitalize now the important things. They use um, exclamation points to add now emotion to the text and rhetorical questions okay so rhetorical questions are usually used now when you are advertising something and you really really want them to buy your product they use what we call rhetorical questions next we have the second type which is your instructive text so when we talk about instructive text it is a written text to instruct someone to do something or relating to procedures to be done okay the word procedures there do take note the tone of words is commanding and may use formal and direct words okay so when you go to the toilet when it says they're ladies only that is an example of an instructive text meaning those who consider themselves as a lady or a female are allowed to enter now those cubicle. Okay, another example that we have here is when we're going to, or when we are entering now, specific places or specific establishments. Before we enter, you will see there now announcements or instructions. Like you need to make sure that you have your mask. No mask, no entry. No face shield, no entry. You need to keep your distance. There are markers now that you will see on the floor that will show you now how far should you be standing from another person. You need to cover your mouth. Should you cough, for example, or suddenly sneeze, ensure that you are covering your mouth. And at all times, there are hand sanitizers available should you need to use hand sanitizers. So those are instructive texts, okay? So when you follow now, for example, certain procedures, or you need to follow step-by-step uh, -step processes, but it uses now formal and direct words, those are examples of your 
instructive text. So how is it different now from your informative text? So informative text is defined as the text which contains factual information and step-by-step -step procedures, okay? So when we talk about informative text, please do not get confused with the word step-by-step -step procedure because we can also use it in your instructive text. Where can we use now uh, your step-by-step -step procedure in an instructive text? When you go to the gym, for example, and your trainer asks you now to do these kinds of routines, those are instructive text. When you research now, for example, how to create this dish or how to do origami uh, origami for example or how to do origami foldings those are instru uh, instructive texts they provide now direct words that you need to do or that, that you need to use okay or that you need to follow now so as for you to be able to create the product that you are following whereas when we talk about informative text it needs to have what we call factual information, okay? Factual information, meaning where do we usually see this? In your newspaper, announcement board, okay? What are the step-by-step -step procedures that they are saying there? When they create now what we call announcement board, or for example, when your teacher now announced that he or she is giving you an activity okay she provided now the details of the activity and gave you now instructions on how to submit the activity that is an example of your informative text it is found under your announcement okay so when we see this now informative texts are very formal that's why your news is an example or your news articles are examples of your informative text because it follows now structures and at the same time okay it uses formal languages it's very informative in its manner and whatever now information is being or is whatever information you are asking it will provide now all the necessary information so when you research now in google Okay, informations about certain someone or about a certain person. Whatever information do you, they will be providing in the text, those are informative informations. Okay, so that is your informative text. And lastly, we have what we call your descriptive text. A descriptive text are very informal. It just aims to describe now a certain person certain things or certain events using what we call adjectives or adverbs to clearly emphasize now the description process so for example your teacher now showed you a uh, a square okay so if she asks you now to describe the square automatically some of you will say the square is color blank the square has four sides, four corners, and are all in right angles and have the color blank. Those are types of your description, uh, descriptive text. So you're giving now descriptions on certain items or certain things using now, okay, using now your five senses. So you visualize things or you appeal things now using this descriptive text, you are actually appealing to your five senses. So even if they cannot actually see the, uh, the object, since you provided now a clear description of the item or that's, uh, that person, they will use now their senses to imagine now how that object or how that person looks like. So that is your descriptive text. So for example, this basic sentence, it says here, the leaf fell off the tree. So your teacher or your instructor asks you now to create a detailed sentence using now this certain or uh, using the basic topic. So you might say that the leaf that is color green fell off the tree that is six feet 
or fell off a six feet tree. So you added now adjectives to provide the color of the leaf and the height of the tree. So those are descriptive text. Okay. His eyes were like the color of the ocean on the clearest day. So you can say that his eyes that are, uh, no, for example, the word his. So you can write, for example, here already the name. So blank's eyes are color blue that are the same with the color of the ocean on the clearest day during summer, during winter, during um, autumn. Okay, so those are your detailed sentences. It's just simply adding now adjectives or additional informations to your, okay, to your basic sentence to add now appeal on the description so that they will better understand now or they'll have a better understanding of the object or of the person. Okay, so I think this is where our discussion ends for week eight, okay?